I am at RSA 2024, but none other than my good friend Jeremy Ventura. Thanks, Jeremy, Chris. I'm good, Chris. How are you doing today? I'm uh, not too bad. A little bit tired. My feet hurt. Oh, but yeah. I'm taking it all in my stride. So, um, you're with a new company now. Can you tell me, like, who are you with? What do they do and what problems are they solving? Absolutely. So, Jeremy Ventura, I am with Myriad 360. I am the uh, field CISO for Myriad. And so, Myriad has been in business for 20 years, uh, headquartered here in the United States out of New York City. And there's really four pillars. There's data center and network infrastructure, cloud, cybersecurity, and AI. And so at the end of the day, we're a global system integrator. We provide products and services to businesses of all industries and verticals. And really, from a programmatic and strategic standpoint, making sure that we can grow security businesses, security processes, and gain full resilience within cybersecurity. That's really, really interesting. And I think you're probably an excellently placed to answer this next question. So something I've been hearing around the show floor and from my peers when I chat to them is, you know, why is protecting data, why is data security, why is information security so darn hard? You know, why are we not moving the needle faster than we are? You know, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, this, we could probably talk about this for an hour, but <laughs> there is a, there's a lot of different things. And I always try to bring it back to people, process, and technology. I think with people, right, talk, I think that's most importantly to start. I think from a people's perspective, we've been talking about now for years of how there's a cyber shortage in talent and just retaining employees. Um, so I know we've made a lot of great initiatives with the federal government and some major corporations out there to get more people and be more diverse and inclusive of getting into cybersecurity. That's one aspect. But I also think to your point, from the technology standpoint, from the data side, there's so much data everywhere, right, Chris? Like there's data everywhere where we come in when there are B BYOD devices or especially through that digital transformation or during COVID, right? We had employees working from home, right? From SaaS applications to email to non-human identities, human identities. There is so much data everywhere. And I think it all always comes down to the number one thing, fundamentals, but specifically visibility. Do I know where all my data is? Do I know who has access to that data? Do you know how that data is being processed, how it's being stored? And organizations today are better at it, but we still, as you know, we still have a long way to go. Absolutely, and kind of that is one of the hot topics that I've been hearing about. Something um, I like to find as shadow SaaS apps. You know, we've got oh, yeah. shadow IT, but now, it's moved to the cloud. It's like uh, yep. SaaS app for everything, which is uh, problematic, right? It is. And I think, you know, even kind of playing into that space, I think a lot of times we all think about humans. How is a human interacting to a certain application? Um, how are they authenticating? How are they being authorized? But now we have non-human identities as well, right? We have things like APIs. We have from SaaS to SaaS application, and what kind of access do you give them? What kind of access do they have to do things like read or write emails or certain permissions or privileges? And so that scope, I like to call it the blast radius, unfortunately, as we bring in more technology in this world, is growing and growing and growing. And I think the ideal goal is how does organizations try to limit that, right? How do we start to protect our organization? How do we reduce the risk? How do we gain control about the data that we have and where it's going? Absolutely. I think the first step, like you said, is visibility, is understanding, you know, what well, SaaS apps are in use and are we happy with that or are we not? Right. Absolutely. Um, and, I, and I love what you guys do. Uh, and, you know, from a even data loss prevention, we need to think about things such as insider threats. We need to think about data exfiltration. So it could be something simple as a disgruntled employee leaving the job after an unfortunate layoff or whatever it might be. And from there, they're taking company sensitive information, whether it's PII information, PHI, company secrets. And a lot of times organizations, they know it's a problem. They know they have to protect it, but they don't have the right security system, security control, security technology in place to actually identify, try to look at that abnormal behavior to understand this is actually not a suspected pattern and we need to do something like respond and investigate to this as well. Absolutely. Last year, as you know, uh, you were here and everyone was talking about AI oh, yeah. like crazy. It was like, it wasn't a sentence or a stand that went by without AI this and AI that. I don't know about you, but this year seems a little bit more tempered in that respect. You think what so? Are your thoughts? <laughs> A you little think so? bit, a small <laughs> amount, a micro amount. Yeah. Um, what do you think? I, I think this year, 2024 RSA, is the explosion of AI, uh, especially in the business that Myriad's at, right? We work with about 250 security partners, next deal, and one one of our great partners. And there's so many companies saying they do AI, AI power, or AI resilience, or AI defense, or AI protection. 
And when you really start to understand what they actually do, I think for the economic buyer, the individuals that are, or users that are gonna buy and utilize these products, you really need to test these products to understand how is that AI actually being introduced into the product? How is it actually creating better efficiency or productivity for your team? Um, I do though, like just looking around, right? There are a lot of vendors here and I do see that, still see that slogan of AI. Um, so I would say it's actually, I think it's, I think companies are double downing on AI and the marketing of it. And I think the big question is, is, is the AI automating and making a task simple? And is that task something you actually wanted to do in the first place? Because if you're introducing AI to do a task that you never wanted to do in the first place, then right. for me, it makes the question more why. Right. And I, I, I love this topic because I do think as we, as an industry, we say AI, I also think there's this aspect, I'm going to even bring it down a little bit from automation and orchestration. I also think that there's an aspect of, is it really AI or are we looking to automate more? Are we looking to, again, I kind of used the words earlier, but increase the efficacy or efficiency of how long it takes us to respond to it as we're investigating or even detect it when it's in our network, right? We've just seen some recent news where um, some major organizations having a ransomware attack. And I know there was a report that just came out, the Verizon data breach report just came out, I believe last week. And the time it takes still to detect that somebody was actually in your network is still increasing. And exactly. I think that's, and that needle isn't that, well, it is moving, it's just not moving in the right direction. Exactly, exactly. I don't know if we're necessarily moving in the right direction, <laughs> but you know, we, we have to be hopeful, right? I like to look, I like to look, look at security as uh, glass half full. And so I think with that, it's like, we need to continue to have those conversations, broker those conversations with great partners like yourself and other vendors out there to really ensure that these technologies are the best. And we're also going to, again, increase the resilience and the security posture of our businesses. That certainly makes sense. And it's a great thought to close on. Jeremy, thank you. thank you for joining me. Today. Always. It's a pleasure, Chris. Thank you very much.